Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Science Sizzler. And on popular demand, I have brought to you today Desi researchers. Okay, or research published by scientists from IIC Bangalore. So uh, this study was published in April 2022. So not very recent, and it was published in Journal of American Chemical Society, which is popularly called as JACS. Um, it is one of the very high impact. Uh, journals okay not just in terms of the impact factor but in rec in terms of the recognition as well so the title suggests that it is an adaptable water soluble molecular boat for selective separation of phenanthrene from isomeric anthracenes so uh, some some of you might uh, not really understand by the title that what they have tried to do so i have broken down this article into several sections so that you can easy, it is easy for you to understand that how why they carried out the study and what are the conclusions or what are the results of the study so in short i'll just uh, try and explain what they have tried what they have done basically uh, <clears throat> so industrially industrially poly uh, aromatic compounds basically uh, aromatic compounds uh, which have few systems okay uh, poly aromatic hydrocarbons like naphthalene is there uh, phenanthrene is there anthracene is there so these have a lot of utility because they are highly conjugated systems okay in fact uh, behind me also you can see uh, they have utilized one uh, strategy which is called as a host guest complexation so i'll explain uh, to you about that as well so like i was saying polyaromatic hydrocarbons like phenanthrene anthracene naphthalene uh, these are industrially very important because they are they are they have highly conjugated systems so they are used in electronic uh, systems like semiconductors in in diodes and even for dyes also because in dyes also you might have studied that you need conjugated systems right so uh, so they have high utility in industry so what the authors have tried to uh, do over here is is that they mentioned that it is very difficult to separate uh, the uh, phenanthrene from the isomeric anthracenes so when you when you basically are synthesizing phenanthrene so th uh, there are some uh, amounts of anthracene also that get produced and it gets very difficult to to separate phenanthrene from anthracene it is very expensive so they have tried to basically find a way in order to uh, separate phenanthrene from anthracene using the host guest complexation so what exactly is host guest complexation i'll just tell you in a bit now the 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 corresponding author is uh, professor partha sarthi mukherjee he is a professor a, at uh, inorganic chemistry department in iic bangalore so let's see what they have tried to do so they, they have they, they basically mentioned that uh, so okay let me first tell you what is a host guest complexation so host guest complexation is there is a host molecule like for example you, when you invite someone to your uh, home you have a host and then you have a guest so what is a host guest complexation is that there's one molecule which will get encapsulated by this host molecule so as you can see behind me there's this purple uh, ring and within this purple ring you can see white spheres so this white sphere is the guest molecule and this purple uh, pop, like you can see the purple molecules uh, surrounding it that is the host so basically the guest gets encapsulated inside the host if you want to know more about it maybe you can study uh, about beta cyclodextrins these were some of the most prominent host guest complexation molecules so what happens in beta cyclodextrins is also that the outside of the molecule is soluble and the inside of the molecule is hydrophobic in nature so outside it is hydrophilic hydrophilic and inside it is hydrophobic so what they are trying to say is that artificial molecular systems that undergo induced fist fit guest binding are challenging to design and are rare in literature so what they mean by that is nature is very good at making molecules which can do induced fitting so what is induced fitting is for example let's say if i am trying to insert something into my hand natural systems they have a tendency to adapt so if it is large in size they will adapt they are flexible and they will adapt to the size of this guest molecule but artificially it is very difficult to do that artificial molecular systems that undergo this induced fit induced fit means flexible fitting uh, are challenging to design and are rare in the literature okay so now they uh, tell you about polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons whatever i just told you in the introduction that they are industrially very important and uh, uh, the conjugated planar uh, structure which basically leads to conjugation is uh, extensively utilized in optoelectronics like light emitting diodes i, I mentioned leds and then uh, even in sem semiconductors okay so this is a very uh, valuable characteristic so uh, now what they say is that you can see over here among these polyaromatic hydrocarbons 
um uh, phenanthrene is valuable precursor in the industry which is obtained from anthracene crude anthracene okay so phenanthrene is, is obtained from anthracene and that is why you need a way to separate phenanthrene from the anthracene so uh, they have mentioned that there are a lot of uh, purification purification techniques that have been developed but most of them are uh, expensive and time consuming that is what the authors uh, convey so uh, now what they mention is that <coughs> these scientists huang and co-workers reported an organic microcycle for separation by host gate complexation so they say that this a similar work has already been done by uh, these group of researchers where they tried to separate phenanthrene uh, from uh, using the host gate complexation and that is what they have tried to do over here so you can see they have tried to design a water soluble appropriate molecular host which is which is having a hydrophobic pocket so what that means is if you uh, take a host molecule which i said is hydrophilic on the outside and hydrophobic in the inside so what is the basic principle the basic principle is that if you add phenanthrene or any hydrophobic compound so you can understand that these uh, polycyclic uh, aromatic compounds they are highly uh, non polar so if you add them to water they will not be very stable okay or they will kind of like collate together so if you have this uh, molecule which is basically hydrophilic on the outside okay so if it is hydrophilic in the outside means it is water soluble but it is hydrophobic on the inside so inside it is hydrophobic but outside it is hydrophilic so if you have such molecules in water and let's say you add any non polar molecule so what is the high probability the high probability is that this non polar molecule will enter that hydrophobic cavity because outside it is hydrophilic so it has nowhere to go so the only place that it can actually go is into that hydrophobic pocket so that is the basic the principle and th this kind of host gas complexation has been utilized for a lot of things including for uh, drug delivery systems and even for catalysis okay among many other uses so now let's see what they have done and what is their novelty in this uh, particular um, work so what they say is that uh, generally we utilize uh, rigid organic donors so basically to make this guest molecule okay to make this to give shape to this guest molecule you usually require rigid molecules and why is the reason because of the directionality and predictability obviously because you want to make it of a particular shape you just don't want it to be super flexible that it is just waving around in the atmosphere right you do not want that you want it you want to have some sense of predictability so if you have rigid molecules like for example if you have alkyne alkyne is very directional you know that it is going to align at an angle of 180 right so that way they are saying that generally rigid molecules are preferred but then again they also mention that there is also it is also important to Uh, include flexible molecules because like i said in when you talk about natural systems natural systems have induced fit mechanism that means if if a molecule is very large or if a molecule is very small the guest molecule is very small the host will adapt to its shape right the host will try and adapt to its shape so that is why they are saying that we also need to make it flexible so obviously it has to be rigid because we want some sense of geometry to the molecule to the guest molecule uh, to the host molecule but apart from that we also want some flexible groups so keeping all of this in mind they try to make a molecule so as you can see this is the uh, this is what they have done uh, they have utilized this uh, palladium based uh, ligand okay and uh, this is uh, basically another molecule that they have utilized a pyridine derivative so as you can see that if i can zoom in and show it to you once you can see that they, this is there's a ch2 linker over here so overall you can see it's it's sort of rigid but then the ch2 linkers give this flexibility so that is what they were saying that we need to incro incorporate some flexibility in these uh, in in these uh, uh, host molecules so to do that what they have done is they have uh, provided this methylene linker over here so this provides some sort of flexibility and uh, as you can see what structure it adopts so basically this nitrogen over here and this nitrogen over here both of these coordinate to the palladium okay so you can see this nitrogen imagine this is one nitrogen and this is another nitrogen both of these nitrogens coordinate to the palladium so this a uh, purple uh, geometry over here is of palladium okay this purple sphere is palladium so this nitrogen and this nitrogen they both coordinate to this palladium and then uh, what happens two molecules are utilized so there's one nitrogen over here and then there will be another nitrogen of different molecule so this one nitrogen over here let's say this nitrogen coordinates to the palladium and then the other molecule the other nitrogen also coordinates from here that that is how you end up getting this sort of geometry right so uh, let's see what they did next 
so let me just zoom out yeah so what they have done is that they have just provided a brief uh, idea over here that uh, the separation of phenanthrene uh, from uh, anthracene from isomeric anthracenes uh, was quite successful and they were able to obtain phenanthrene of 98% purity so that means this technique was quite successful even though i have not really uh, validated their claim that by other techniques what sort of purity you get but that is what they have claimed in this article that they got 98% pure purity but this is one i can say drawback or maybe it is there in supporting information i did not see this uh, that i think it would be better if they can compare it with other techniques in terms of the time taker in terms of the when they are saying that it is not it is the other techniques are quite costly and expensive uh, I, I think a fair comparison would be great to show that okay how efficient is this technique so i i don't know if they have done this or not but if they haven't i think that is something that should be included because if you are claiming that yes your technique is superior for some reason then then you need to show it with evidence as well right so then they have done some uh, techniques uh, characterization using proton nmr and uh, using mass spectrometry they have done some characterization but ultimately the most important char characterization is by single crystal x-ray diffraction or xrd so through xrd they have shown that this is the structure and uh, again let me zoom in and show you the structure over here so as i was telling you that there are two more two systems of that pyridine derivative so you can see the nitrogens are coordinating to the palladium over here and then uh, yeah and then these two pyridines are also coordinating to the palladium so overall this is the structure and it looks like a boat so that's why they have co called it like a molecular boat okay it sort of like looks like a boat now <clears throat> the inclusion uh, so okay so this is the characterization so main technique through which they actually established the structure was through xrd and then proton nmr and mass was done to to support these studies okay now uh, next what they have done is that um, okay so what they're saying uh, okay so to see the complexation the host guest complexation so what they have done the inclusion complexes uh, that is the poly aromatic hydrocarbon were characterized by proton NMR, UV visible spe spectroscopy, and 2D NMR studies. Okay, so they have tried to characterize that whether this poly, these aromatic compounds, these polycyclic aromatic compounds, whether these are actually going and binding inside the cavity of this host uh, molecule. Okay, whether so these are the guest poly aromatic hydrocarbons are going to be the guest, and this molecule that they have uh, synthesized, this is the host molecule. Okay, so they are, they are trying to see. Uh, they are trying to provide evidence through proton NMR and uh, NMR and uh, 2D NMR studies and UV visible spectroscopy whether this guest molecule is actually or whether these polyaromatic hydrocarbons are actually going inside this cavity. So uh, how they do that is quite it's not very complex but I mean this video will get uh, too long if I start explaining that those factors so that's why I am avoiding that but mainly I will tell you uh, that how by 2D NMR they show this I, I think I have highlighted it somewhere so yeah so by 2D NMR how they show it is that okay that the naphthalene uh, a proton okay the protons that come in the uh, for naphthalene okay so the, like for example what happens when you have host guest complexation you can imagine that there are a lot of pyridine molecules and then they, you have the proton NMR of the uh, poly, polycyclic um, like of the hydrocarbon as well your cyclic hydrocarbon polycyclic hydrocarbon so all of these merge together in the NMR so it is very difficult to separate out peaks but whatever peaks are separated out like for example they are saying that this naphthalene peak was coming at 6.39 ppm okay at a, at a chemical shift value of 6.39 and this was coming and there was another peak which was coming at 7.7 .7. so this was not generally in the range of 7 to 7.5 so you can easily like differentiate that this peak was coming at 6.3 so this is this is an aphthalene peak and this one at 7.7 .7 is is one of the peaks of the uh, of the uh, host molecule so what they have tried to do is using the 2d nmr 2d nmr basically tells us if the two protons are very close to one another or not if they have some correlation that means they are going to be very close to one another that's what the 2d nmr tells us so when this what they are saying is that when they did 2d nmr they found that the naphthalene peak and the uh, so you might be wondering why naphthalene is there because we were talking about anthracene and uh, uh, what do you call um, um, phenanthrene so i'll tell you why they have used naphthalene okay I'll, I'll address that so anyway so what they have shown is that this naphthalene peak and the peak of the uh, one of the peak of the guest molecules uh, they are very close they have some correlation so that means in space they are very very close to one another so that means 
that that is what they are trying to prove that yes the um the complex session has taken place okay <clears throat> and they have also shown that uh that the cavity expands uh depending on the size of the molecule and that is why they say that is uh that is the reason uh the reason behind this uh flexibility of the molecule is due to these methylene linkers because they attach some flexible uh systems within the guest molecule like i showed you initially the methylene linker so they say that yes the size can also be expanded and how they found the size can be expanded when they did the xrd studies okay so xrd studies are very important they saw that there is a difference in the size so like over here you can see the distance is 16.1 armstrong here the distance is 15.5 armstrong so depending upon the size of the uh, uh, host uh, sorry depending on the size of the guest molecule okay i am sorry if i am interchanging the uh, host and guest terminologies okay because i am i think i am going too fast because i want to quickly upload this video so uh, apologies for uh, uh, apologies for uh, some times where i have interchanged the host and guest uh terminologies okay so again i'll repeat the host molecule is the one which they have synthesized and the guest is the polyaromatic hydrocarbon polyaromatic or polycyclic hydrocarbon right so anyway so yes so through through the uh, uh through the um, xrd studies or through xrd analysis they have shown that this uh um, host guest system is also flexible okay so they say that yes somehow it is mimicking how natural systems work by changing the size of the cavity and uh, then in the end uh, they say that uh, okay so why they had done the studies from naphthalene so i am presuming this i do not know but i don't think this was the original objective of the research i think the original objective of the research was to make uh, make a some sort of a um, like a host guest system or some kind of a host molecule which can maybe uh, capture uh, some specific uh, poly uh, uh, cyclic aromatic hydrocarbons okay uh, so i think that was their original objective or their objective was definitely not separating phenanthrene and anthracene okay so i think that is something that they thought of thought about it later so i think they were just trying to see that uh, if this particular system is selective towards certain poly aromatic hydrocarbons or not and when they were doing the studies they found that okay it is selective towards phenanthrene so what they did they tried to find the binding strength uh of uh, this um, host molecule with phenanthrene and anthracene and they found that there's a very significant difference like phenanthrene has a very strong binding affinity towards this uh, host molecule that they have synthesized and anthracene has a very less affinity so i think when once they found out that okay this is uh happening that one of the uh, poly aromatic hydrocarbons has a very strong affinity then they started looking towards its uh, uh, like utility that how they can utilize this uh, finding that they have just uh, and uncovered and i think that is when they uh, thought about uh, you know uh, sort of like aligning the paper in a way that uh, we can separate phenanthrene from anthracene that is my belief i do not know i have not talked to the authors i am just presuming that i i don't think this was the original objective of the study it was something similar something to do with polyaromatic hydrocarbons but not exactly separating phenanthrene from anthracene that is my presumption so anyway when they found out that okay phenanthrene has a very strong binding affinity then they try to separate it from anthracene and they found that they could obtain it with a 98% purity and uh, why it has selectivity towards phenanthrene uh, over anthracene that they have tried to justify using computational studies so over here computational studies were utilized to justify that why this uh, host molecule has more affinity towards phenanthrene than anthracene right so anyway uh, uh, i think this is uh, one fabulous work that is done by authors from researchers from ic bangalore and i think i would definitely love to congratulate them uh, and uh, and i hope that you learned something from this video uh if you want to see more such videos uh please subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications quickly and please hit the like button so that that will tell me you like these kind of videos because ultimately when i see that you know when i when i upload videos of csi and it and gate and i get you know a lot of it does affect you in some way that more people you have more viewership for a particular set of videos i try to avoid that because i think uh, building a research temperament and analyzing research articles is very very important if we if we want to grow as a country but then you know somehow you have that kind of uh, like in the end you know 
uh, what kind of viewership you get to a particular video does matter sometimes it does matter okay so yes if you if you if you hit the like button it will it will reach out to more people and if you like such content please share it amongst your friends also so i would be encouraged to make such videos thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video very very soon till then take care and bye bye hey guys so i am a verified educator on an academy and along with that i am also available on the an academy plus platform where i am taking live classes along with other educators so in case you are interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the an academy plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you are not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the an academy for that all you need to do is go to the an academy website or download the an academy learning app and search my name over there that is ACT once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the an academy platform all right